For this video, I'd like to talk about scaling and reflecting problems. So before we do some example problems, let's just talk about this more generally. So let me make some room. And we need to understand what does it mean to scale something or reflect something. So scaling, you could think of as multiplying. And what we're going to do, we're going to start with our parent function for parabolas, y equals x squared. So let me just get a quick sketch of this. And again, remember to get a sketch of something, you just want to plot some points if you're not sure what to do. You could also use a graphing calculator, but ultimately you want to feel comfortable doing this by hand. So let me just put in a few more values. And when we plot this, it goes through the origin at 1, 1, at 2, comma 4, and then the negatives are going to be symmetric at minus 1, 1, and at minus 2, comma 4. And let's connect these with a curve. It's going to be our parabola. And this is by hand, so it's not going to be perfect. But if you want to see a perfect shape, you can, of course, throw it into a graphing calculator. Now, with scaling and reflecting, we're essentially going to look at three different cases. So let's first think about the case where we multiply, and this is going to be on the outside. So we're going to multiply x squared by some number, and let's say it's bigger than 1. So that will be case number 1. So let's say we have 2x squared. So we want to think what happens to our parent function when we multiply everything by 2. And one quick way to think about it is that you're essentially taking all the y values and doubling them. But to really understand this, again, you want to make a table or just plot points. And let's start with 0. We know when we plug in 0, 0 squared is 0, and 2 times 0 is 0. So it still goes through the origin. But now when we plug in 1, 1 squared is 1 times 2 would give us 2. So we're up 1 point, or we're double the y value compared to our parent function. And when we plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. So instead of being at 2, 4, it's now going to be at 2, comma 8, which would be somewhere up there. And when we plug in the negatives, it's still going to be symmetric. You get minus 1 squared, which is 1, times 2, which is 2. And minus 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So we get this point up here. And if we connect these with our parabola, and again, it's a little bit difficult to draw these by hand, but you can get a general idea. And what you might notice is that the parabola essentially became skinnier. Honestly, it should be a little bit better curved here, but that's the disadvantage with a hand drawing. And I can show you this in Desmos in a moment, but let's just try and understand it first. So the y values, notice, compared to the parent function, are now double what they used to be. Here they used to be at 4, now they're at 8. Here they used to be at 1, now they're at 2. So we can say this stretches the parabola by a factor of 2. And again, visually speaking, what happens is that the parabola gets skinnier. But imagine taking this parent function as essentially just stretching both sides of the curve upwards by this factor of 2. And the bigger the number is here, the bigger the number we multiply by, the greater the stretching. So if we multiplied by 10 and had y equals 10x squared, essentially all the y values would be 10 times what they were on the parent function. So instead of being at 1, 1, it would be at 1, 10, which would be somewhere up there. And you'd get symmetry again, but that would be a very steep parabola. So this is the case where you're multiplying on the outside by something bigger than 1. And I say on the inside, or on the outside, because you could also, in theory, multiply on the inside. And that has its own effects, but that will be taken care of in some later video. It's a slightly more complicated idea. So now we want to think, what happens if we multiply by a fraction? Something that's still positive, but is less than 1. So let me make a little bit of room. And let's look at the case where we have y is equal to 1 half x squared. And again, let's just plot some points. It still goes through the origin. 0 would give you a y value of 0. But when we plug in 1, 1 squared is 1 divided by 2 would give you a half. And when you plug in 2, 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 would give you 2. 
and the negatives would be similar. Minus one would give you a half, minus two would give you two. And so notice what happens compared to our parent function, the white function, the white curve here, is that all the y values are now half what they used to be. So for instance, at one, one on our parent function, on this orange curve, it's now one comma a half. The y value is half what it used to be. And when you plug in two, for the orange curve, it has a y value of two, which is half of what it was on the white curve, this parent function. So all the y values are now half what they used to be, but essentially it makes the entire curve wider. Or we can say it compresses by a factor of one half. So essentially what's happening is you take your parent function and we're gonna compress it. Essentially, we're going to squish it so that each y value is now half of what it used to be. So anytime you multiply by some fraction, some number between zero and one, you're gonna get this compression. It's gonna squish it and it's gonna make it wider. So for instance, we multiplied x squared by 1 tenth or divided x squared by 10, then all the y values would be a tenth of what they used to be. So it'd be at one comma 0.1 at two comma 0.4, but it would be an incredibly wide looking parabola. And the smaller the fraction, the wider it would look. So that's the two main cases, but now let's talk about reflection. And that's when you multiply by a negative number. So our final case, let's say we have y is minus x squared. And when we multiply by this negative in front, essentially all the y values will now be the opposite of what they used to be. So in, on the parent function, we had the point one, one, again, that's the white curve here. And when we multiplied by this negative in front, instead of one, one, it would be at minus one, one, or excuse me, one minus one. And when you plug in negative one, negative one squared is one, but then you take the opposite of that, that would be at minus one, minus one. But again, this goes through the origin because putting in zero, you still get zero. And when you plug in two, you end up getting negative four. So you still get the same parabola. It's still symmetric on both sides. So it's the exact same shape as our parent function, but all the y values are now the opposite of what they used to be. So by multiplying with a negative, and it doesn't matter what negative, that's going to reflect it. So we can say this is a reflection across the x-axis. And with all of these, the scaling and reflecting, it could all be combined together. For instance, if you were to take the equation y equals minus one third x squared. So that's gonna reflect it and make it wider. So it's gonna compress it and reflect it. So that green curve we can draw would look something like this. Maybe not perfectly, but something like that. So we can kind of summarize everything. You can see all the different cases where the blue one is where you multiply by something bigger than one. The white one is our parent function. The orange one is with multiplication by a fraction. The pink one here is when we multiply by negative. And the green one is when we combined two different ideas. We had the compression and the reflection. So let's just verify this all on Desmos so that you can see it for yourself, since these hand drawings are not always going to be perfect. So I'm on the website Desmos. If you just type in desmos.com, you can get straight to this online graphing calculator. And then over here, we can just start plugging in our equations, y equals x squared, and see for ourselves. If we multiply by 2, Again, on the outside, you can see that the blue curve, that's multiplied by 2. All the y values are now twice as big. At 2, 4, it's now going to be at 2, comma 8, which, of course, we can zoom out to see that a little bit better. So 2, comma 8 is on the curve. We could also multiply by 1 half. We have x squared still, so that made it wider. And let's multiply by a negative. So we have minus x squared, but you can see that that reflects it. So you can always verify this for yourself with a graphing calculator. And if you have like a TI-84, you can do that on there. It's a little bit different, but Desmos is something that's free for everyone. And we could combine ideas. Like we had minus one third 
x, actually I need the x to be in the numerator. So we have minus one third x squared, so that's the black one. But you can see it's reflected. So the red one is the parent function. It's reflected compared to that, and it's wider. All the y values are one third of what they used to be and the opposite. So let's go back to our example problem and start going through some practice.